Hey guys, it's time for Fragment Friday. And once again, I'm off to work. I'm going to go ahead and read a little fragment out of Whirling by Steve Feasy. This is going to be the next book that I'm reading. I haven't even started it yet, so I thought I would start it with you guys. So we'll start with Chapter 1. Trey Laporte opened his eyes, wincing against the assault of the late morning sunshine on his retinas. Sitting up in bed, he clutched his hands to his head as a mortar shell of pain exploded inside his brain. Bright stars lit up behind his eyelids, making him feel sick to his stomach. He sank back onto his pillow with a groan and stared up at the ceiling, which shifted and swirled lightly under his scrutiny. Saliva filled his mouth again, and he concentrated hard on not vomiting, wishing that these feelings would go away. He realized that he had no recollection of going to bed last night. He struggled to remember, small, tight lines creasing his forehead as he tried to piece together what could have happened to cause him to wake up feeling like this. But there was nothing. After dinner, he played pro-evolution soccer on the Xbox with Wayne in the common room. Wayne was his usual inept self, and Trey soon got bored of thrashing the pants off him. At 9 o'clock, he'd called it a night and gone back to his room to listen to his MP3 player. He'd walked into the room, locked it behind him, and then... nothing. He couldn't remember a single thing from that moment onward. It was, as, it was as if someone had hit a delete button at the precise moment he'd entered his room and erased everything from that point until now. He lifted himself up off the pillow again. A fresh wave of nausea rolled over him, causing a hiss to escape his lips. His mouth was so dry that his swollen tongue felt sticky against the roof of his palate. He needed a drink of water. He swung his legs over the edge of the bed, his eyes shut against both the sunlight and the fireworks that detonated inside his skull whenever he moved. He was naked. This fact bothered him because he never slept naked. He fished under his pillow and pulled out his pajama shorts. This was just too weird. Trey forced his eyes open and bent down to pull the shorts on when he saw his shoes. His favorite shoes. What the hell? There was a sharp knock at the door. Trey ignored the knock and the pain and the sickness that consumed every molecule of him. He'd saved for weeks to be able to afford those sneakers, and now they were lying on the floor ripped apart as though someone had taken a large carving knife and slashed at them in some frenzied attack. He leaned forward to get a closer look at the mess and gasped as the rush of blood to his head caused a balloon of pain to burst behind his eyes. My shoes! What the... His voice cracked as he tried to speak and his throat felt painfully raw. The pain pulsated through his esophagus and waves, and he instinctively reached up a hand to touch the flesh around his throat. He swallowed, wincing at the pain that even the simple act caused. Standing up, he desperately, desperately looked around for something to drink and saw properly, for the first time, the chaos that had become his bedroom. He turned in a slow circle, his mouth hanging open in utter disbelief as he took in the destruction and disorder that was all around him. He shivered and became aware of the cold for the first time. Looking over his shoulder, he stared at the window, which was hanging at an impossible angle from the buckled metal casing. Large gouges could be seen on the frame where the white plastic had been scored away, revealing the shiny metal underneath. The window itself was intact, but appeared to have been torn away from the top hinges so that it hung outward at a drunken incline. His eyes shifted to the wall to the side of the opening, where great rents had been made in the plaster, as if someone had taken a garden fork and raked it along the surface. How could he have slept through this? How could anyone have slept through this? The entire room had been wrecked. His possessions, he had so few good things that he kept them neatly arranged and cared for, were scattered around the place, many broken and destroyed. His heart was slamming into his chest, and he felt a sudden urge to scream out in anger. He wanted to cry. He wanted to kill someone. He wanted to find whoever had done this in. The knock on the door was repeated, louder this time, and he turned to look in its direction. His eyes fell on the key that was still in the lock on the inside. He walked over and twisted the door handle, expecting to feel the door give and open. He stepped back when it refused to budge and stared suspiciously at the white glossy surface. Reaching forward again, he took the key between his thumb and finger and slowly turned it clockwise. The lines on his forehead deepening at the sound of the bolt sliding free from the plate in the door and receding back into the body of the mechanism. He let the door open an inch or two. Turning his head, he looked over again at the window, noting that the key was still in that lock, too. His heart shifted up again, and he looked around the room again in dismay, unable to even begin to try to piece together what had happened here. A desire to throw up came over him. The damage to the window looked as if it had been done from the inside, <clears throat> and yet he had been in the room asleep. Surely he would, have, he would have woken up at the sound of all this carnage going on around him. Trey slowly turned around and went back over to the bed. 
He picked up his ruined sneakers, ignoring the daggers of pain that stabbed at his brain, and sat on the mattress, staring down at the ripped leather and rubber jumble that had so recently been his prized possession, the best pair of shoes he had ever owned. And I'm going to stop there. So, yeah, that sounds um pretty good so far. So that was Whirling by Steve Feasy. Okay, guys, have a good Friday. Bye.